drop the needle on. Welcome to Tessera's Nerf Room. Whether or not you're a Halo fan, whether or not you like Nerf, you have to admit... That's pretty damn cool. Right, so the review format's gonna change for this video because this is a really weird blaster. It does not fit any of the proportions of any other blaster. This is the Nerf Needler, and it was a very controversial blaster when on release. You know why? Because of one tiny little detail. It says Nerf Limited. You know what that means. Lot, very expensive, very hard to get, very limited buying time. Probably going to show up on store shelves a year later for half the price. And while yes, this blaster did show up on store shelves just a year later, it was still at retail price. We paid $90 for this. It was very expensive. And the blaster is not very big. I mean, especially compared to other $100 to $150 blasters on the market. It's pretty small. It's about the size of, well, I don't know. This, these proportions are super weird. I can't really judge the size of it. And this was the only Nerf limited blaster that I really had interest in for a couple reasons. Not just the fact that I really love Halo. I've been playing the game for years, but also because this blaster is a bit unique. It actually tries to be a convincing prop for the game. If anybody remembers the original Mandalorian blaster, that thing was an absolute train wreck. There was really nothing good about it. Even if the blaster was good, it didn't look like a prop. It was super uncomfortable. It was way too expensive. And the only redeeming feature was the one LED and the four sound effects that you were paying $120 for. It looked nothing like the prop. Neither did the alien's pulse rifle. Even though the blaster had the right proportions to an extent, it still, it, it was not a very convincing prop. It was bright neon yellow and white. I mean, you kind of have to do that because it was, it was a gun shaped gun, but not this one. This one, they gave all the details. I'm gonna take a while just to go over the design of this. First of all, we kind of have to address the box because they always make a big skew about the box. Um, the outside of the box looks great. The inside of the box is rubbish. You pretty much just have this foam cardboard insert thing that the blaster is sitting in. There really aren't any details or anything. It's just, it's a package box. There's, there's not much to say. I will say, I really dig the outside of this though. It looks really cool. It looks like a, a secret like metal display case. There's bits of the box have been blown open to where you can see the needler on the inside. And this was taped on and I didn't realize that and I kind of damaged the box a little trying to get it off and it's still, it still, it won't come off, so yeah. Getting the cardboard sleeve off though, it, it, ignore that, ignore that. Getting the cardboard sleeve off though, you pretty much have the same thing, the Nerf Limited on the side, on the back, you have the front of the needler that's been blown open. I'm not sure why they put that cardboard sleeve on the box. I'm sure they did it for some reason, but I don't understand it. Enough blabbering about the box though. This blaster looks really cool. And I mean that from an objective standpoint of somebody who is looking at this as a prop from the game. Not just my biases towards the Needler being my favorite gun from the game, but also because this is an actual prop from the game. There are so many tiny little intricate details. The only thing that they changed is the grip and they changed it in a good way because it's way more comfortable than the actual grip gun thing, you know? The whole shell is made out of custom parts like this tiny little hexagon pattern up here, which just looks amazing. I mean, in person, it looks great. It looks like carbon fiber, even though it isn't actually carbon fiber, it's just plastic. And then you have the needles on top, which are made of soft rubber and they spring back into place. And the needles are probably the coolest part of this blaster. And I'll explain why in a little bit. Looking at the muzzle thing on the front, good Lord, it looks so sick. So mean and, and bad and, and like, it's so bad guy. It's so alien like, and yet it still looks like an actual gun. Like it looks so, it looks so much like the prop. I can't stress that enough. Even the way that they hide the 10 dart cylinder in the shell, it just blends in. You don't even notice it. They continue the carbon fiber thing going down under the bottom of the blaster. This is the battery door. They completely hit it by making it a whole chunk of the shell that you remove, which 
is genius. But anyways, then we get on to the part that is very concerning, the grip. Everybody knows this was made not for human hands. And this grip just looked atrocious when I first saw it. It's very, very small and it's square. I hate square grips. You're not gonna believe this, but the grip is comfortable. Now you have to take the term comfortable with a grain of salt because we're looking at a, a blaster for form over function, 110%, and, and you will see that more in the firing demo. There is, there is no justifying this blaster being used in a war. However, when you hold this, it just kind of works. Your three fingers go down here and it's very smooth and very filleted. Your main finger goes on this trigger, which has a really weird plastic spring trigger. I don't understand what's going on with that, but the trigger looks cool and is very comfortable. The back of your hand just kind of automatically goes sideways. Your thumb fits right up here. I don't know. The grip just works for me. There just happens to be just enough room for your hand to fit there effortlessly. This little bit at the bottom kind of looks like it's gonna jab into your hand and it does to an extent but it really isn't uncomfortable, partially because most of the weighting is balanced directly under the grip with the batteries at the back and the internals up at the top and all the stuff going on at the front. It's just, it's way more balanced than you think and it is not uncomfortable in the slightest. Those of you with a very keen eye may have caught this very strange plastic rectangle there, which is the most interesting thing on this whole blaster. I'll get into that in a minute though. As I said previously, this blaster features a very well hidden 10 dart cylinder, which is really hard to access because there's no room for you to like reach in and turn it manually with this, with all this plastic around it. And it doesn't automatically advance. You kind of got to twist it when you're trying to load the darts in because some of the darts are hidden behind the shell. How do they do it? Screw it, let's just open the blaster. It only does this on one side, and now you have access to rotate the cylinder because the cylinder isn't smooth on the side. It's got these little ridges so you can kind of grab it, which is very helpful. And this blaster includes pink elite darts, which is really cool because it kind of looks like the needles. Now I'm sure like half of the viewers watching this are probably screaming at the camera right now, shut up about the design. Let's just get on to the functionality. How does it work? How does it perform? Should I spend hundred dollars on this thing? Okay, uh, don't worry, I'll get to that now. This blaster has an on and off switch. The on and off switch is right there and it has three options. First of all, you have the on and off right here, which turns the blaster on. And then you have the other mode, which I should probably close the windows to show you. The windows are closed, it looks very monotone. Off go the lights. I walk over, I turn it to the third position and oh yeah, it's beautiful at night. I, I just want y'all to enjoy this for a moment. I don't have the same lighting as the phone sees because the phone is optimized, but you have all these pink LEDs embedded into the shell and underneath the needles and in the cylinder to provide a wicked spectacle when the lights go off. And you can see right here, the light on the needles is kind of pulsing on and off going backwards. It's such a significant, tiny little detail that is only seen in the games, and I can't believe that they caught it and put it onto the actual blaster. You've got the ammo counter at the back. You've got like the little intricate details around the sides of the front of the shell that are turned on, this little pink rectangle, which is up there for some reason. Like right here, look at this. It is. This is the coolest looking blaster I own. Now, going back to this, I still have the light turned on. Remember that little rectangle? Well, I just switched it to the main firing mode. That rectangle is a hand pressure sensor. So right now it's, it's turned on, but it's not lit up yet. When I grab it, the lights go on. It's, it's genius. I don't even know how that works, but they made it work and it is, it is really cool. With all that being said, I ought to bring you to the firing demo so you can see how it works. A lot of people are about to be extremely disappointed. So you might as well just click off this video if you're looking at this from a performance standpoint because all your hopes and dreams are about to fall out the window. I haven't got too much to say about this except for the fact that I'm gonna be doing the firing demo twice. Once with the lights on and once with them off. So you will see this.
Yup, that's the rate of fire. Now let's get on to the interesting part. So now I have the lights off and you can see that the lights are still on. Now here's the interesting thing. This blaster is designed to have the needles gradually turn off the lights as you fire the darts. So when they're when you're fully loaded, the blaster's fully loaded. When you're empty, it's empty. So observe the needles very closely. So all of them are off. The way that you turn them back on is very simple. That little door from earlier actually is integrated into the electronics. When it's open, the light is cut off, and when it's closed, the light goes back on and the needles reset. So it's time for the billion dollar question. What do I think of the Nerf Limited Halo Needler? This $100 slow ass prop blaster. This thing is sick. Nerf Limited time and time again has proven that it is not a, a franchise about, or not a franchise, it's not a series based off of performance. It is a series based off of props. And not only is this the best prop they've released, but it's also generally the best blaster they've released too. It just nails everything about the Needler so well. It's such a fun thing to play with. It looks so cool. There are so many different little things about it that are just that much more interesting and fun and, and sick. And it's like, God, if you're a Halo fan, you're gonna fall in love with this thing. The only other blaster I can kind of say is going in a similar direction to this is the Jinx Fishbones blaster because it looks like the actual Jinx Fishbone blaster from League of Legends. However, that one, from what I know, doesn't have any of the cool electronic functions like this thing does, and that thing's $160. This one is $60 cheaper, actually fires 10 shots, is just a little bit more practical. It's also motorized. It also has all that cool little like electronic detail, like the lights and the, the, the automated firing the little display mode that you can turn on and just have the lights on. And even though that turns off in two hours, it's gonna drain your battery. It's a feature that they included because they can. Unlike most of, if not all of the other Nerf Limited blasters, this one hits me differently. I can tell that a whole lot of care and love went into the designing of this product. This is not just a soulless cash grab for the sake of being a soulless cash grab. It is a very well done, faithful prop, a faithful recreation to the prop in a game that so many people love, including myself, not just being a Halo fan, but being an objective nerfer, this blaster is well done. That does not mean that this is for everyone. If you don't like Halo at all, you will be very disappointed in this because as an actual like functional nerf blaster, it is really just a copy of the swarm fire that only shoots 10 darts, hits 70 FPS, and shoots half as fast as the swarm fire does. Won't be getting any performance boost, you won't really getting any mod boost, and it is very, very expensive. It's a, it's a $100 blaster. So for anybody who's just here for the nerf game, no, do not buy this blaster. You're not gonna like it at all the same way that I do or the same way that other Halo fans will. But if you are on the market for a nice prop of the needler, like from the game, you and you want something that's rather affordable, but still looks like the prop, plus you're interested in the nerf market, there is nothing better than this. It's a good size, it's a great value, it's a fun nerf blaster, but it also is a fantastic prop, and it's a $100 prop, which is substantially cheaper than some professionally done props. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I could justify this if I really wanted to. With all that I've said thus far, if you want to get a Nerf Limited Halo Needler, I'll link one in the description. So with that said, thanks for watching. Subscribe if you're new, like if you enjoyed, comment down below what do you want me to review next, and I will see y'all next time. I got some fun videos planned for the future. So thank you. Now I have to go and blow up the Covenant.